Here's an example of an abstract data type for rational numbers. Let's look closely at its rep invariant and its abstraction function. Here's a picture of the abstraction function and the rep invariant for this code. The rep invariant requires that the numerator-denominator pairs be in reduced form, lowest terms. So pairs like 2, 4 and 18, 12 should be drawn as outside of the RI. Now, it would be perfectly reasonable to design another implementation of the same ADT with a more permissive RI. With such a change, some of the operations might become more expensive to perform but other ones might become cheaper. Now, the rep invariant isn't just a neat mathematical idea. If your implementation asserts its rep invariant at runtime, then you can fail fast. You can catch bugs earlier. Here's a method for ratnum that tests its rep invariant. We'll call it check rep. It returns void because it's going to be doing assertions. Note that this does nothing unless you turn on assertion checking. And what it does is asserts each of the conditions found in our rep invariant. You should certainly call check rep to assert the rep invariant at the end of every operation that creates or mutates the rep. In other words, creators, producers, and mutators. So if you look back at the ratnum code above, you will see that it calls check rep at the end of the constructor. Each of the constructors, those are both creators. Observer methods don't normally need to call check rep, but it's good defensive practice to do so anyway. Why? Well, with your call check rep in every method, including observers, that means you'll be more likely to catch rep variant violations that are caused by rep exposure. Now, why is check rep private? Right? Who should be responsible for checking and forcing a rep invariant? The clients or the implementation itself? Now recall from our specs reading that null values are troublesome and unsafe, so much so that we try to remove them from our programming entirely. And in 6005, the preconditions and postconditions of our methods implicitly require that objects and arrays be non-null. We don't have to say that, we just don't want null. So we should extend that prohibition to the reps of abstract data types. By default, 6005, the rep invariant implicitly includes x is not equal to null for every reference, object reference or array reference, x in the rep. So if your rep is string s, then its rep invariant automatically includes s is not equal to null. You don't need to state it in a rep invariant comment. But when it's time to implement that rep invariant in a check rep method, you should still implement the s is not equal to null check. And make sure that your check rep correctly fails when s is null. So often that check comes for free from Java because checking other parts of your rep invariant will throw an exception if s is null. For example, if your check rep has to look like this because you're checking the length of s, then you don't need to assert s is not equal to null because the call to s.length will fail just as effectively on a null reference. But if s is not otherwise checked by the ref invariant, then assert s is not equal to null explicitly. 